You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. This is segment three of episode 56. We're learning about some of the iconic animals of Africa. We'll find details on some of these animals to model how to research and report on the animal in later episodes. Today's objective is to get to know some of this megafauna. Well, one of the animals that comes to mind when talking about African animal is the giraffe. Its exotic long neck and sharply sloped body distinguish it from any other animal in the world. Let's learn more about giraffes. When you think of tall animals, you probably think of giraffes. And you're right. Of the land mammals, they take the prize for longest necks. The neck of a giraffe has seven vertebrates, just like people. But each vertebrae is elongated, and they're connected as a ball and socket joint, so their necks are very flexible. Giraffes are native to Africa. A male giraffe can get taller than a female, up to 18 feet in height. Note the two horns on each giraffe's head. These start out as cartilage on newborn giraffes. But over time, that cartilage turns to bone. The horns stay under the skin and fur of the giraffe. Of all the giraffe senses, their sense of sight is the best developed. These eyes, plus the fact that they're so tall, helps the giraffe spot predators from far off. Their legs can deliver quite a kick, protecting most adults. A giraffe's legs are long and not all that flexible, and that makes their gait a bit stiff whether they're walking or running. Nonetheless, giraffes can run pretty fast, some up to 37 miles per hour. Their mouths and tongues serve them well in eating leaves from trees. Their lips are tough, allowing them to eat leaves from thorny branches. And their tongues, well, they're long and they can grab branches by twisting around them. Here's a nice close look at the giraffe's mouth and tongue in action. Here's a baby giraffe born in captivity at Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon. Visitors to Wildlife Safari can see giraffes up close by going on a feeding activity. These giraffes approach this open wagon to snack on lettuce that'll be handed to them. Maya is also together. a female. She no. is going to be five. And then her baby, Kelly. So he's just over three months. So they're just not in the drive through right now because he is a little too small. To While visitors feed the giraffes, staff members educate them on the giraffes they're feeding. Erin, Bobby, where's that? She says no. <laughs> <laughs> Dolan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Amy, they got long tongues. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a few other differences with these guys. One, Aaron is much lighter than me. That is because they are two different subspecies of giraffe. So there are nine yeah. subspecies of giraffe total. And we represent two of them here at Wildlife Safari. Mate is a Rothschild. So they are much darker with those dark brown spots and the caramel in between their spots. And then Erin is a reticulated, so she has those bright orange spots with the bright white channels in between her spots. I tell Mate's head is a lot more lumpy and bumpy than Erin's is. And that's because the males sequester calcium in a different way. Um, they have calcium deposits all over their head. And that's mainly just for... Can you get something funky in your mouth, mate? Um, added armor onto the males' heads because these males do fight for dominance. Sharon, you're just a little... She's like, nope, I'm going to steal it right out of your mouth. Okay. So the males have all those lumps and bumps to protect their head during fights. Giraffes have many physical adaptations that help them survive in their habitats. The most obvious is their long muscular neck. That puts their head up high. That's where they can reach food that's out of reach 
by most other animals. This male has left the visitors, perhaps tired of having his food snatched away. While videographer Alex McGlasson films him, the other giraffe takes an interest in his camera. Hi. Good thing I've got the wide angle on there. I mean, hi. She wants you. These giraffes proved to be quite the characters. Later the same day, this giraffe makes an unexpected appearance to Excellent. summer campers who are here to see elephants. Sadly, giraffes in the wild are not doing so well. Poaching and habitat loss are putting them in danger of extinction. Most would agree that these marvelous mammals are worthy of our protection. You're watching Ramping Up Your English, and today we're featuring animals from Africa. Now, three of the featured fauna include elephants, lions, and giraffes. Now, if you can get animal models like these, you should do so. They'll help you learn the English names for these animals. If you have kids, they're bound to ask you, which of these animals would eat the others? Well, you should have an easy time answering. Giraffes and elephants are herbivores. They only eat plants. The lion, on the other hand, is a carnivore. It could eat the elephant and the giraffe, but it wouldn't be an easy meal. Elephants are quite willing to take on danger to protect their young, and they can do a lot of damage to an animal trying to do them harm. A uh, giraffe isn't defenseless, e defenseless either. They can see predators from a good distance away. Also, their legs can deliver quite a kick. Now, you could point out that this lion, the male, usually doesn't hunt, so it's unlikely to attack either one of these animals. But you know kids, <laughs> you know, they're going to have a lot of fun with the animals. So nonetheless, a child is going to have the model lion eat the others. So have you ever noticed that in zoos or wildlife parks, the lions are always separated from the other animals? There's a good reason for that. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the animals in Africa. Alas, we didn't have time to feature all of them. We'll continue with the animals of Africa in our next episode. Thinking of this episode, how could we feature a little bit of video from Africa and a lot of video of African animals? Well, that bit from Africa, thanks to video blocks. I received a video clip of the animals from Africa from them. All the other video is from Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon, very much in North America and very far from Africa. You can get in touch with me and tell me how this program's working out for you in improving your English. Send an email to letscreatepro at gmail.com. Visit my website at letscreate.org for all the support materials in this episode. Just navigate to the episode 56 page. You can watch and even download all episodes of Ramping Up Your English at archive.org 
slash details slash rogue TV. Use the search box by entering Ramping Up Your English. You'll find all the episodes there. Ramping Up Your English can be seen in Ashland on Channel 15 of the Ashland Home Network and in the rest of Southern Oregon on Charter Cable Channel 182. Showtimes are 8 o'clock a.m. on Mondays and 7.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Showtimes will vary in different areas. Check your local public access and education stations. I want to thank my director, Denise Ross, and my talented and loyal crew, and I want to thank you, our viewers. All of you help make this program an award winner. Join us next time for Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RBTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.